Hi everyone, my name is Mark Quinn. I'm a tax advisor and chartered financial planner with the Spectrum IFA Group in Portugal. And in this video, I'm going to be looking specifically at the non-habitual residence regime in Portugal, what it is, how you qualify and how best to plan for it. So the non-habitual residence term in itself is quite confusing because non-habitual actually implies that you're not actually a resident here when in fact it means the opposite it means you are a resident but the term non-habitual means or refers rather to the main qualifying condition which is that you haven't been here as a tax resident in the last five years so as long as you haven't been tax residents here in the last five years you qualify for non-habitual residence other than that there are really no other main conditions. I mean, you need an address here, but well, that's obvious. Um, and it doesn't need to be a, a property you own, so you can rent a property as long as you have a, a registered address in Portugal. So the first step to establishing non-habitual residency is to get your residency status sorted first. Now, before um, the UK left the EU, that was very easy for British nationals because we, we had an automatic right to be here. We could just go down to our local town hall in Portugal get an EU residency certificate, 15 euros, and that was it. And EU nationals can still go through that simplified process. For British nationals now and other non-EU nationals, we have to go down uh, some sort of visa process. Most commonly for our clients, that tends to be the D7 visa process. Uh, I've done another video on that, and I'll link that in the description below. But what that's, that essentially means is it's a passive income, so as long as you can demonstrate that you're in receipt of a a relatively low level of income each month, you can qualify for entry via the D7 visa route. So once you've got your residency permit through the visa route or by virtue of your EU citizenship, and you've um, notified the tax authorities here that you're a tax resident here, you can then apply for the non-habitual residence scheme. The next stage is crucial in making the non-habitual residence regime work for you because the, the NHR regime is kind of a generic scheme and it needs to be modified for your particular situation and objectives and there needs to be planning around that. So what I often describe the NHR scheme as being is it's just a door, it's just a gateway. So the key to that door is that you haven't been resident in, um, in Portugal or tax resident rather in Portugal in the last five years, as I said earlier. Once you get through that door and you're into the scheme, there's a series of boxes within that room um, and each represents different parts of your income and assets. Just a so, quick note to say, if you are finding these videos useful, I'd be grateful if you could like and subscribe and also pass on to any family, friends, colleagues that may, may be thinking about making the move to Portugal. Certain things will be treated very favourably within NHR. An example would be dividends. So as a general rule, dividends coming here into Portugal will be tax free. Uh, pensions also qualify for a flat rate of 10% tax, which is quite attractive relative to the UK, which is 20, 40 or 45%. Uh, but there are certain areas that need special focus in particular. Um, one, one example of that is work or employment income. Now, as a standard default position, if you're employed or you're a self-employed worker within Portugal, you, you will generally pay tax at normal scale rates here, which start at 14% but go up, up as high as 48%, so they can get quite steep. You also have social security contributions um, to add on to that. Um, now, one way the NHR can help you in, in respect of employment income is if you qualify as a high-valued activity. And if you do, then you can qualify for a, a flat rate of tax of 20%. And high valued activities include things like engineers, artists, doctors, um, IT workers, etc. Capital gains is another interesting area within the NHR scheme because so for certain assets, it does actually benefit you. So if we think about residential property, if you have a residential property in the UK, um, there's no capital gains tax here in Portugal whilst you're in NHR. But on the opposite side of that, if you have a share portfolio, unit trusts, ISAs, they will be taxed here. So different assets will be treated differently within the NHR scheme. So the tax treatment will actually be different depending on what type of asset you're talking about and the gain that you're realising. 
So what are some of the pitfalls that, that you need to be aware of when you're applying for an HR? Well, the first one is that you need to make sure that you're clearly detached from the system you're leaving. So if you're currently a UK tax resident, it's all well and good applying for an HR, but you need to make sure that you're clear of the UK tax net. And there's very clear rules around that, uh, both in terms of the year of the, your departure from the UK and also on an ongoing basis, making sure you stay out of the UK tax net. And we can guide you through that because it's very specific to each individual as it depends on your ties and connections to the UK. Something that's also critical to your move here and applying for an HR regime is actually before you even come here. So it's doing the planning before you arrive in Portugal. And that can, it can be a year or two in advance of your move here. So a couple of examples of pre-move planning that you'll be doing prior to moving to Portugal is, for example, taking your tax-free cash entitlement from UK pension scheme, so you have the 25% allowance. When you move to Portugal, that would be fully taxed because Portugal doesn't recognise the, the concept of the 25%, uh, what's now called pension commencement lump sum. So that's something that you should be doing before you leave the UK. Another example would be ISAs. Now, ISAs are a great planning tool from a UK context because they're tax-free. The Portuguese government and other governments throughout the EU and the world actually would look through the ISA wrapper so they would just see the underlying investments. Now if that's a share portfolio or funds then you're going to be liable to capital gains tax if you sell them here as a Portuguese tax resident even if you're in an HR. So again another pre-move planning point would be to sell your ISAs prior to, to coming to Portugal. If we look at the flip side of that what should you be doing uh, when you when you arrive in Portugal, so things that you need to be deferring until you come here. Well, the first example would be taking pension income. So whereas the tax-free cash sum we'd want to take before we leave the UK, pension income we'd actually want to defer until we become a Portuguese tax resident because we, we can qualify for that 10% flat rate of tax. Whereas in the UK it would be taxed at you know a minimum of 20% and anywhere up to 45%. Another example would be dividends. Um, dividend payments here under NHR, so for the first 10 years they would be tax-free here under NHR from a UK limited company. Now these are general guidance points and there are nuances and caveats around each of these rules, so don't take any action before you seek advice. It's also important to structure your assets accordingly whilst you're NHR. So during that 10-year window, you have an opportunity to organise your affairs, to make most use of the 10 year period, but also making sure that you're tax efficient beyond the NHR period. So a good example of this is pensions. Uh, pensions are a fantastic uh, planning tool. And as a general rule, we'd always say to people, keep as much of your estate in pensions as possible because it's always outside the scope of UK inheritance tax. But the NHR scheme kind of flips that planning idea on its head because you then have this opportunity to get out of your pension scheme during that 10 year, 10 year window at a flat rate of 10%. After 10 years, it's going to jump as high as, well, anywhere between 28 to 48%. So you've got to look at the IHT efficiency of leaving the, the money within the pension scheme compared with the income tax efficiency of extracting it during that 10 year time frame. And we can talk to you about how to structure investment um, accounts here to make use of NHR and post NHR period. We can look at pension options for you both within the UK and if you're considering overseas options and also um, if you want to extract the, the pension scheme during the 10 year window and finding an alternative home for it so it works for you during the NHR and beyond. A common question I'm often asked about NHR is what happens after 10 years? Well, it's simple, you just become a normal Portuguese standard rate taxpayer and you, you pay tax at the, the normal scale rates. Uh, now that can be good, bad or neutral and it all comes down to the, the planning that you put in place during your stay here in Portugal as to how you'll be taxed after the end of NHR. Just one last point about NHR. Another question I'm asked a lot is, are there any tie-in periods, both from a, a Portuguese point of view and a UK uh, perspective? And there are none. So if you came, came here to Portugal and you decided that it, it, 
you know, for some reason it, it didn't work for you, life here didn't work for you, then there's no lock-in period. You can return to the UK. The only thing to be aware of is that there's a five-year UK anti-avoidance rule. Now, that prevents people from leaving the UK for a short-term period, i.e. five years or less, extracting lots of funds from, say, companies free of tax or crystallising capital gains free of tax and then return into the UK within that five-year period. So just be cognizant of that. Whilst there's no restrictions here in Portugal, you do need to be mindful of the fact that, that, that there may be tax on return to the UK. But again, we can walk you through the rules in, in this respect. So I hope you found that video useful and I look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you.